your girl Mo City, aka Mo City Trip, and I'm back and I'm better than ever. We're going to discuss toxic relationships and we're also going to discuss like how to avoid them, how to get out of them. Well, because I was sleeping, just in the night, sleeping, mind my business, and this morning I got a phone call and um, I was like, it was like in the morning when I was about to wake up, so I was asleep, I was deep in sleep. But it was still, I was still a light sleeper at that time. So I knew who was calling me because their ringtone is different to my normal ringing. Like, the dun -dun 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 -dun. yeah, that's not their ringtone. So I was asleep and I already knew who was calling me. So I kind of just let it ring. Because it was somebody from my past that I just, I wanted to lose in my past. But thing about that though is I woke up and I checked my messages and they text message me and at the time yeah, I was gone by. so at that time I wasn't thinking because I got a new phone also so I just looked at the number I didn't know who it was it was just like hey call me and I was like okay so I just called them and then as soon as they picked up like I recognized the voice I was like oh my god okay it's this person so that made me want to make this video even more today because that's a person from my past that I just wanted to move from, move on from because that person wasn't good for like my happiness and their energy wasn't good. Like they just weren't good for my mental health or for my well-being. Might as well take this down. <laughs> See, when something's toxic like this, just let it go. Oh, no, nah, but. That person wasn't good for my well-being, so I kind of just decided to put distance between us and um, move on to bigger and better things. Once we got off the phone, like, we had our little private conversation. We got off the phone, and I just, it was weighing on my heart to just get all my thoughts and things off my chest. So, the thing about it is, if somebody doesn't sit right with your spirit, and if you just know something's not right, and if you just find yourself like you're doing so many things for another person, and that person isn't doing anything for you in return, like, for example, people like to ask for money, right? So if you have somebody in your life that keeps asking you for money and keeps asking you for, like, rides or asking you for help, right? But then when you're in the situation where you need help and you reach out and you need, you know, you need help. If that person can't help you or if they just refuse to help you, like they just don't want to help you. Knowing that y'all had history, knowing that you did all these things to help them, you need to let that person go. That person's not there for you. When you're in a relationship, whether it be a friendship or a romantic relationship or even family like family can be toxic also even family if you're in a situation where you're doing things and you're trying to grow as a person you're trying to you're trying to um further your future and you're moving forward and something or someone keeps pulling you backward that's toxic that's exactly that's the exact definition of toxic toxic is poison Something that's poisoning some good, like something that's poisoning your growth or poisoning you, poisoning your emotions, your mental health. Mental health is so important. We all have things we struggle with, and a lot of people, I want to say everybody struggles with mental health, but most people you know, they struggle with their mental health. And a lot of people don't know how to handle it already. And so, if you're already struggling with something to do with your mental health, and you have somebody in your life that's just making it worse, or putting you in a depression, or for example, energy. If their energy is bringing down your energy, that's not somebody that you want in your life. It's not. And I don't care, you know, say your boyfriend. I don't care how fine he is. I don't care how much history y'all have. History don't mean nothing. That person does not care about you, period. History should not be a factor. 
if that person doesn't care about you and you feel like you want to make the decision to cut that person out your life, and if it'll be in your best interest, I suggest you do it. No matter the history. Because, like, that don't mean nothing. Like, for example, the toxic person that I've had in my life in the past was my, ooh, I put, I got foundation on my nail. But anyway, was like my ex, right? So I haven't had that many relationships. So the only relationship that I've had, I've had one relationship. And, I'm trying to look at this one. And that was like really toxic because at the time I thought that's what love was supposed to be, but that's not what love is. Like that was selfish. Love isn't selfish. When somebody cares about you, they put your needs before they put their needs, right? So, this person, we were together for um, a year, but we were friends before that happened. So, and he was my best friend. So, and you would think that having, having someone in your life that you consider your best friend and like, I thought that, you know, they have my best interest at heart, right? You would think that, right? Because that person is supposedly like your best friend. But as time goes by and you start seeing red flags and things like that, you realize that person doesn't have your best interest at heart at all. Like, you realize that actually, in fact, it's the opposite. That person only wants to be in your life. Because of the things, yeah, I'm gonna just put this up real quick. It's getting on my nerves now. Just temporarily. So, because of the things that you're doing for that person, because you love that person, that's the only reason why that person's in your life. Not because they love you, or not because supposedly y'all gonna be together forever, or because y'all gonna get married and stuff like that that don't mean anything in this situation but because if you notice that the only reason why that person wants to be with you and wants to marry you is because you're helping that person and you're basically coddling that person and you're you know giving that person money you're giving that person somewhere to live like you're giving that person stability and you think that they're there because they love you and they want to be with you. But as time go by, you have to recognize red flags. Like, you have to see, oh, that person doesn't actually love me. Because if that person loved me, they wouldn't make me feel this way. They wouldn't, you know, emotionally hurt me. They wouldn't, when they didn't get their way, they wouldn't put me down. They wouldn't call me names. If that person really loved me, knowing that I care about their safety, they would call me when they're out. When if they're, if they're spending the night elsewhere, they will call me to tell me. They'll call me at night and tell me that they love me. Good night. They wouldn't just leave me in the house by myself wondering, oh, where are they? Why am I in this bed by myself? Why is it dark? Why, why am I so sad? You have to think about things like that. If I'm in this relationship with this person, why is it that when we're not together, I'm so sad, I'm so depressed? Like, why am I crying? If this is love, if this person loves me, if this person truly loves me, why am I crying? Why is this person making me cry? Um, Why do I have to beg this person to spend time with me? Like, you just have these thoughts. And then once you have these thoughts, you realize, oh, maybe, maybe it's, this isn't love. Like, maybe this person, maybe this person just doesn't care about me, you know? No. You just have to know your worth. You just have to know, if you know your worth, you know what you deserve, right? You know what you, you want out of love, and you know what you don't want. And if you know what you want, and if you know what you don't want, then you're just not going to settle. The reason why people mostly stay in a relationship is just because they're settling, right? 
They don't know that there's something out there that's better for them. So, not even them. Let me just, in, in, this, whole, in this whole video, let me speak from personal experience. That's all I know. Personal experience. For me personally, the reason why I chose to stay in something that wasn't right for me, and once I realized it wasn't right for me, I still stayed in it. And I still had to basically be forced out of it. Like, I had to realize, like, this, okay, that's the last straw. Like, sis, this isn't it. Like, go, just free yourself. Like, I'm sure I was really at a point where I was like, I'm sure there's something out there that couldn't be worse than me, worse than this. It just couldn't be at all. And so, that's when I left. I didn't leave the first time I found out he was cheating on me. The first time I found out he was cheating on me, I brought it up in conversation. We had our little conversation, and I knew he was lying to me, but I ignored it. I was just like, oh, well, he lying to me, but he over here defending his case. I'm going to just let it go because I love him, and I don't want to cause problems. I just I just love him, and I just want to be with him. So let me just, let's just drop it. It's not that deep. It's not that serious, like. He still loved me. Maybe he just, you know, maybe he was just, you know, I don't know. I was making excuses for him. And the excuses were terrible excuses that I was making. But I was making excuses for him, right? The second time he cheated on me, we broke up. But we broke up, but we were still talking, right? We were still talking, and we were still, you know, we were still friends. I still was texting him, telling him about my day. And he was still texting me. We were still talking like we still in this relationship. He just wasn't in the house, okay? And the problem with that is, this is the second time, right? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Shame on me because I was still, you know, giving him the benefit of the doubt. I was still letting him do his thing. And I feel like that second time made it worse. Because then he was free. He was free to do what he wanted to do. But I was still giving him access. When you have somebody toxic in your life, the worst thing you can do is give them access. You're basically giving them permission to hurt you, right? And you're giving somebody permission to hurt you. So what they're going to do, they're going to keep hurting you, right? That's not, that's not good for you at all. That's not good for your mental health. That's not good for your well-being. So this whole thing goes back to your mental health. What you need to do when somebody is trying you and testing you like you stupid, show them like, oh, you think I'm stupid? Bet. I'm finna ruin your whole world. Like, space. You put distance between yourselves. Right? You think I'm dumb? Okay, bet. I'm not finna answer your FaceTime. You think I'm done? Okay, bet. I'm not finna text you first. I'm not gonna text you good morning, handsome. Like, no. You have to prove to me your worth. I'm not finna sit here and wait around on you trying to prove, trying to beg you and prove to you why you should want me. You don't want me? Bet. I got options. Let me go find somebody who does want me, you know? You don't want me? I'm not about to cry. Why would I cry over a nigga? I used to cry over niggas, but I learned my lesson. You don't cry over a man. Like, no, you you boss up on him. You show him that, well, not necessarily show him because it's not about him. It's about you and your personal growth. But you boss up and you do your own thing. You be happy. He's going to be on his phone elsewhere looking on Instagram, seeing you, seeing how you glowed up for yourself, seeing how you shining for yourself seeing your inner peace yourself and he gonna be mad that he missing out on that he gonna be mad that he you know put a stop to your to your well-being he gonna be mad that oh she over here sh uh shining the light to the world damn why she not shining the light in my life she ain't shining the light in your life nigga because you fucked up that's why she ain't shining the light on you because you ain't cherish her you didn't value her if your thing is, you know, you want to get taken out on a date with your boyfriend, spend quality time with your boyfriend, and your boyfriend over here 
going to his friend house all the time to play video games and stuff and you at the house you know dang i can't even bake because i can't even open this shit with my nails let me see oh here we go okay if you telling your boyfriend like y'all haven't spent quality time together like you miss him um like babe like take me out take me to the movies babe let's go watch a movie something so simple like that i just want to go to the movies like that's it and he's over here prioritizing his homeboys over you then that's not the one for you because that means he doesn't respect you that means he doesn't care about you he's saying he care about his friends more than he care about you and when you love somebody you don't do that you make time for everyone you don't just you know dismiss one person for another person so if he's doing that he doesn't care about you honey he doesn't care about you at all and that's just like the hard facts the hard truth you just have to know like you deserve better you want to be with somebody that's not selfish you know you want to be with somebody that would do the opposite that would tell his friends like hey bruh i know we, we said we were finna play 2k tonight but you know what? I'm going to go home and spend time with my girl. Because we in school, we haven't spent time with each other due to school and work. Let me just, let's just have a night in. Let me just cook her, cook her something, you know? Show her that I love her. Simple. Something so simple like that. Something so simple. These toxic men, they just disregard all of that for their own needs. They take. If somebody's just taking, 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 taking from you, that's not the one. That's just it's not the one. Knowing that you don't have nothing. Knowing that y'all in the same boat, y'all in the same like the same tax bracket, you know? Knowing that y'all y'all don't have money to begin with. And he ain't spending his money on shit y'all want together. He's spending his money on shit he won't. Spending your money on top of it. Next thing you know, you don't have any money to spend. Like, honey, you need to look at things like that. If he is always asking you to borrow money, but every time it's something that he want, he want to do, right? It's something he want, he always got funds for. But when it's something that y'all want, collectively, all of a sudden he's broke, right? Like, make that make sense. Make it, just make it make sense. Like, why is it that he, that's selfish behavior. That's all it is. It's just selfish behavior. That's all it is. It's nothing but selfish behavior. Back to loving yourself, part of loving yourself is valuing yourself and knowing how to say no. Sometimes you have to say no. If you can say no to a man or a friend or whoever, your family member, and they accept that, that means they're not, they may be toxic, but they, you know, that means something. That means that, okay... They're starting to put you first now. They're starting to consider what you want now, you know? Don't give all your power away. That's the whole point of this. The way you stop a toxic person is not to give up your power to them. Don't give up access to them, you know? Don't give up, like, giving them priority over yourself. You have to always put yourself first. If you don't put yourself first, nobody is going to put you first. If you really are in a loving relationship and you actually have a partner that puts you before they put themselves, like, okay, that's a blessing. But you have to also remember, like, that may be also, that can turn around and become toxic too, depending on the person that they're putting first. So always put yourself first. Even if you do love your partner and you do want to, you know, do nice things for them and, 
you know, bless them, stuff like that, you still have to bless yourself first before you bless them. So, like, let me see. For example, like, spoil your partner. Yeah, spoil your partner for sure. But make sure your needs are met first. Make sure your mental health is in order first. Like, make sure your happiness is considered first. That's all I'm saying. At the end of the day, as, as morbid as it is, like, I'm here in my own crib by myself. And he off somewhere else doing God knows what. And probably with his new girl or whoever he messed with now. Like, that's fine. You were born by yourself in this world. You gonna die by yourself in this world. Period. That's it. Like, at the end of the day, all you gonna have is yourself. You may have family if you're lucky. You may have friends if you're lucky. But for the most part, all you gonna have is yourself. So, you gotta take care of what you got. y'all would like an actual story time of like exactly what happened i can do that if y'all want just comment and let me know that that's what y'all would like but um because i i feel like this this like this video is all over the place because y'all really don't know like the background and everything and like other toxic things that you know that happens, or y'all may go off of the toxic things that's happened to you. So how family can be toxic, I would say. So even if you in a relationship, whether it be friends or a romantic relationship, and literally y'all are at a point where all you do is arguing and being petty towards each other, that's toxic. That's what you. That's what you have. And if y'all cannot figure out a way to be on the same page and to get along with each other then it's better to just let that go like to be honest because that's not going to do anything to benefit you not at all not at that point it's not going to do anything to benefit you at all all it's going to be doing is hurting you at the end of the day hurting your relationship at the end of the day like know that's just the sad truth it took me months to actually let go of my relationship and even after we broke up i was in a state of depression for like i'll say a year after that like a good year like until and i'll say until probably this year is when i really just came to fully accept that shit like just to fully come to terms with the fact that we just never gonna be together ever again like this was somebody that even like they were my best friend like and it's weird we were in a relationship and we would even have conversations like so we'll be talking about marriage to each other but we'll in that same breath we'll be like well even if we don't marry each other we gonna be at each other's weddings to other people because we we just love each other we're best friends and like if you in a relationship with somebody and you telling them like oh well we may not get married but even if you marry somebody else i'm gonna be there that should be enough of a red flag for you to decide to exit that situation. Because that means y'all both are just not on the same page. Like, y'all not on the same page. And that's exactly what it was. We wasn't on the same page. He was trying to, he was trying to, you know, be a hot boy out in the streets. Before Hot Boy Summer even existed, he was trying to be a hot boy in the streets. And I was trying to cuff. Like, we was just on two totally separate pages. Like, that's it. End of story. That, that's the easiest way to get in a toxic situation. Or when you have somebody that, you know, trying to, you know, get up in your drawers and they over here selling you a dream. Like, if somebody's selling you a dream and that dream just seemed too good to be true, run, girl. Run the other way. Like, you don't need that. You don't need somebody selling you a dream. Cut it out. You don't need somebody selling you a dream. If you want a dream, girl, go get that bag. Get that dream yourself. Because once you have that, once you have that in place, once you're stable and you need somebody else to come along that's equally yoked as you, that will not be toxic. 
I mean, there's other factors to where it can be, but that's a whole nother story. But if you have somebody, if you have yourself and you find somebody that's like-minded as you, that has similar experiences as you, that values you, values you, that respects you, that loves you, that knows your worth, knows that you know how much you're worth and they know that you're worth the same, if not more. There's no way that can go wrong. It can't go wrong because it's just like y'all on the same page. Y'all trying to win together. Y'all trying to grow together. Y'all trying to build together. That is how you have a successful relationship. Because toxic ones is something that you just do not want, honey. Being in a toxic relationship is something that if you can avoid at all costs, please try to avoid. Because that's something that you just you do not want at all. And until you decide within yourself that that is something that you don't do. You, uh, until you decide within yourself that that's something that you don't want and you deserve better. And you stand firm that you deserve better and you just will not settle for anything less than what you deserve. You will get taken advantage of. And that's just the reality of it. Like, that's the sad reality. People will, if you're vulnerable, people are going to want to prey on that vulnerability. Because they know they can. If you give somebody the freedom to take advantage of you, they will take advantage of you. And if you're just letting them, it's just going to get worse and worse. They're going to run with that. They're going to take full advantage. If you give somebody an inch, they will take 10,000 miles. Like, I'm telling you, that's just the truth. That's just the, the reality of things. Like, as unfortunate as that is, it's just... People, man, human nature. Humans are flawed. Humans are like the most flawed creatures. I promise. God made us that way for a reason. God made us that way on purpose. We're not supposed to be perfect. Nobody out here has a perfect life. Even people you see on social media and stuff that, um, you know, people that was born into rich families and stuff, and you may think they have a perfect life, even they don't have a perfect life. Like, they've been through things behind closed doors. Like, I'm sure they've dealt with a toxic relationship themselves. I'm sure, you know, they've had experiences that may be similar to your own experience. I'm sure that they have been hurt the same way that you have been hurt. You know, it's not worse, you know? You just don't know what people are going through. So what I... Ooh, hell no. This lipstick been through the ring, boy. Been through the ring. So what I try to do is I try to emit positive energy out into the world. Like, I'm chill. I'm have I have the most chill personality ever. Like I don't let things bother me anymore. Like since that situation that I was in, since that toxic relationship I was in, like life is short, man. Like you just have to seize the day. You just have to be as happy as you can be and try to touch as many people as you can touch. But my big brother, he before he left this earth, he he touched so many people. Um he made it his mission to shine a light in so many people's lives. And while he was doing that, I didn't even see that's what he was doing. It took him to die for me to realize that he really sh shone a light, like, on a lot of people. And I took it, like, I took advantage of it. Like, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't see it. Like, he was just my big brother. So, you, now that I'm older and now that I'm... Like, now that we're, I'm the age, the same age he was, like, I see, you know, he telling me things. He guiding me in life. He, he's showing me the way. If, if, if that's, like, the, the, the best way I can put it. I'm modeling my life after him. I'm modeling my life, not just after him, but just, just trying to be a positive person in my life. Just trying to help others. Just trying to you know, shine a light before I exit this earth. That's all I'm trying to do.
that's why. That's why I felt the need to actually make this video and stop playing because it's just like I'm sure I'm sure there's somebody younger than me that may not have even been through what I've been through and I don't want them to have to experience that I want you to learn from my mistakes like learn from what I've done wrong learn from what I've done right model after what I've done right so you can get to it quicker you know Learn from what I've done wrong so you don't have to experience that, you know? Use me as a guide. Use me as a mentor. Like, if you need somebody to talk to, my social media is there. Slide in my DMs. Ask me questions. Like, you know? Ask for advice. I don't mind giving advice to younger girls. Like, or anybody, period. If you need advice on something, slide in my DMs. My social media is there. Like, I'm here. Use me as a resource. I'm just here to help others and to touch others. And my look is done. I just did something simple and basic because I'm just going to work. I don't want to, you know, be too extra and stuff. But I don't know. I kind of want to leave this bandana. I might. I might leave it and take it off when I get outside. I don't know yet. But this is kind of cute. So, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, have this discussion. It flowed together the way I wanted to, so that's all that matters. Um, just remember, you're loved, you're valued, and you deserve better, okay? You deserve way, way more than the world. Like, you deserve everything. So if somebody's not giving you that, don't be scared to move on just because you're complacent like I was, you know? Don't think that... Don't be scared that there's nobody else out there for you because I promise you there's other fish in the sea that will treat you so much better and will value your life. If somebody's hitting you, putting their hands on you, that's not love. That means you need to move from that situation somehow. Talk to somebody. Find a way out of that situation because love is not supposed to hurt. And even when my love wasn't physically abusive, it was mentally abusive, it was verbally abusive. And that can be harmful as well to somebody's self-esteem it can be harmful to you know your mental health like find a way to get out of that too luckily for me i was forced to get out of that situation and y'all find out why if i do a story time if that's what y'all want but lucky for me it was something that i didn't have to do myself we was just forced apart in that situation but not everybody is lucky like me sometimes you have to Take the initiative to get yourself out of that situation. And I just want y'all to know that I love y'all. And somebody in this world loves you. You don't have to do anything detrimental to end your life or anything. Because somebody loves you. You just have to reach out. You just have to find the love. And not even that. If you just be open and, you know, stay positive, keep a positive attitude, really that love is going to find you because energy attracts. Like good energy attracts good energy. Bad energy attracts bad energy. So just stay stay with it, push through it, and I promise you things will get better. And this video is getting a little long-winded, so at this point, like, we out. Like, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, like this video, or dislike this video if you don't like it. But why would you do that? Like, that's petty. But like this video and comment whatever y'all want to comment. And I'll comment back. And also slide in my DMs. And get I'll give you advice. And let you know whatever you want to know. It's whatever. And ask me questions. I might just do a Q&A. You never know. And uh, on that note.